Hello viewers, I am Zahoor Islam and you are watching me on my YouTube channel Zahoor Islam Official. Today our topic is Peptic Ulcer Disease. So what is Peptic Ulcer Disease? So Peptic Ulcer Disease is the disease which is totally related with your the disease of the stomach. So Peptic Ulcer may be duodenal or it may be gastric. It means that peptic ulcer, there are two types, one is duodenal and the second one is gastric. Duodenal ulcer, they are more common and occur more often in younger adults. While the gastric ulcer, they are usually occur after middle age. What are the different causes of the peptic ulcer disease? There are multiple causes of peptic ulcer disease. So the major cause is whenever there is excess use secretion of gastric acid so in case of excess use production or secretion of gastric acid from the stomach so the chances of peptic ulcer ulcer, uh, ulcer disease is high whenever there is inadequate protection of the lining of the stomach and duodenum against the digestion by acid and pepsin so for example whenever there is insufficient protect protections if we can't protect our lining of stomach and duodenum against the digestion by acid and pepsin so another uh, major cause is there is the presence of h pylori infection helicobacter pylori so for the eradication of h pylori uh, you know there are uh, different uh, uh, drugs or treatment protocol i will explain inshallah at the end of this lecture for example, sometimes we are using certain medicines that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in said corticosteroids. So they are also the major cause of peptic ulcer disease. So in case of excessive use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so there may be 100% chances of peptic ulcer disease. What are the different symptoms related to peptic ulcer disease? So the first one is abdominal pain. So, in abdominal pains, may be a minor discomfort or naving, burning, dull itch or very severe pain. So, initially, in peptic ulcer disease, so there, there will be a sort of discomfort to the patient and there will be a burning sensations or there will be itching and there is severe, there will be severe pain and abdominal bloating occur throughout your uh, abdomen. So, typically, in the epigastrium or ripe right hypochondrium region so i mean the pain sensation that is radiates and the, at the epigastric regions and the right hypochondric regions occasionally high up behind the sternum and low down around the umbilicus so as i have told you that uh, especially uh, in uh, uh, peptic ulcer disease, disease, there is occasionally the, the pain that is radiated, especially uh, behind the sternum, uh, behind the sternum, and then uh, and then it become low down around the uh, umbilical uh, cord. You can say the umbilical mean this is just you can see be below the below the diaphragm. The pain is just uh, below the diaphragm. And duodenal, you know, and uh, duodenal ulcer typically comes on when the patient is in hungry and may walk and may walk the patient off in the middle of the night. And gastric ulcer, it is typically worsened by food. So I mean that during duodenal ulcer, uh, typically uh, when this duodenal ulcer occur, when the patient, when the uh, when the patient is hungry, or for example, when the patient has appetite and it may walk the patient up in the middle of the night mean the duodenal uh, uh, ulcer it is always occur on empty stomach mean the pain is increase when your stomach is empty so in gastric ulcer it is typically worsened by food by in taking a food whenever you uh, for example if you if, if you take anything or during meal the pain is increased so it indicates that the patient is suffering from gastric ulcer. 
Now these conditions are relieved by alkalis and food and duodenal ulcers. So I mean that you need aluminium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide and some antacid to relieve the pain to reduce the gastric secretion. In this condition, the vomiting may occur in both the duodenal and gastric ulcer. In both gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer, vomiting occur. Now, what are the signs? So, the signs, they are uh, reported here. There is tenderness in at the epigastric region or if at the epigastrium or at the right hypochondriac region or umbilical region during an attack. Mean, during attack of uh, peptic ulcer disease, uh, the signs which are reported by the different literature, so there may be a tenderness in the epigastrium and the right hypochondriums or umbilical region during an attack. So let's uh, come to our investigation. Now how you will investigate the peptic ulcer disease? So far investigation, so you need hemoglobins. So you will have, uh, these are the diagnostic tests which are required, so you will have to check the hemoglobin level of the patient and um, esophago uh, gastro uh, duodenoscopy they are also performed while with biopsy for histology and staining for h pylori uh, with uh, ureas test for h pylori and barium meal and the absence of endoscopy while stool examination to exclude the intestinal parasite so these are the different investigations you will have to perform you will have to investigate all these cases for example if there is h pylori infection so for that you will have to do biopsy for the histology and staining staining and um, there are different diagnostic tests which are uh, usually uh, performed uh, to find out the exact that what will be the exact exact cause of peptic ulcer disease definitely uh, you will have to check the hemoglobin and um, esophago uh, gastro uh, duodenoscopy so barium meal in the presence and the in the absence of endoscopy. So you know that uh, sometime, especially an H. pylori uh, infection, uh, there are certain technique like endoscopy. They are usually performed, and with the pipe is directly uh, connected with your stomach, and uh, at the end of the laser, uh, you know there is a laser, and with the help of that laser, we can uh, check out that uh, either 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 um, the patient is suffering from peptic ulcer duodenal ulcer or gastric ulcer okay now let's come to all treatment what is the treatment objectives so the treatment objectives to relieve the pain and reduce the the normal the, the the general treatment protocol is to reduce the pain and reduce the gastric acid secretion and then to promote the healing of the ulcer to eradicate the H. pylori at present to prevent the uh, recurrence of the ulcer into a wide complication. So these are the general treatment protocol. You will have to relieve the pain, you will have to relieve the, uh, uh, reduce the gastric acid secretion and you will have to promote the healing of the ulcer and to eradicate the H. pylori at present. For example, if there is H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori species is present toward there, so it should be eradicated and uh, to prevent the recurrence of the ulcer and to avoid the complications. Uh, this is non-pharmacological treatment which is much and more important than pharmacological treatment. You should, for example, a patient having uh, peptic ulcer uh, complication, so you, uh, he or she should avoid the smoking and uh, alcohol intake. So, as well as avoid the food that aggravate the pain, for example, the spicy food, it can aggravate the pain and allay the anxiety and stress. You will have to relieve the anxiety and stress. Uh, surgery indication for, um, uh, simple indication for surgery, for example, if there is uh, chronicity or crippling uh, period attacks, then the economic uh, uh, factors which make it uh, difficult uh, for the patient to uh, persevere with the medical treatment uh, and then come to our complications so complication may be perforations uh, mean intestinal perforation and gastric outlet obstruction and uh, hemorrhage uh, that doesn't respond to conservative myers now this is very important uh, uh, come to our pharmacological treatment uh, what is the pharmacological treatment 
so uh, in case of dyspepsia whenever there is indigestion so in case of indigestion magnesium tricyclicate is used orally 15 ml 8 hourly i mean in between meal and at bed time to control dyspepsia avoid taking antacid with 2 hours of proton pump inhibitor ppis and said associated duodenal or gastric ulcer and gastrodiodenal erosions you should take isomeprazole oral and adults uh, 20 mg daily per 4 weeks uh, repeat course if ulcer not fully healed mean you should take 20 mg daily per 4 weeks mean uh, before meal uh, early in the morning or omeprazole oral so an adults 20 mg daily per 4 weeks repeat the course if ulcer is not fully healed if the ulcer is not fully recovered then you can continue the 20 mg uh, capsule omeprazole per 4 weeks or rebeprazole oral an adults 20 mg daily for 4 weeks repeat the course if the ulcer is not fully healed mean it depend upon on the condition if the patient is not recovered then you can repeat the dose for example if there is bleeding and peptic ulcer then isomeprazole can be used in the form of intravenously iv so an adults 40 mg daily or omeprazole iv an adults 40 mg 12 hours we mean after each 12 hour for up to 5 days it should be continued to the patient inshallah in my next lecture we will talk about the h pylori eradication thank you so much for my lecture so uh, if you need any kind of help so i'm always available for any kind of services thank you